Welcome to another video. Today I would like to talk about taking pictures with the telescope. What you can see here are two very cheap cameras. One of them cost me $37 and the other one $52. This one is full HD or 2 megapixels. This one is 4K or 8 megapixels and it has the Sony sensor. Later in the video I will show you pictures of both of these and just how amazing they are for the price they have. But first, let's talk about taking pictures with the telescope. First option you will get and the easiest one is simply to put your cell phone to the eyepiece and off you go and you take a picture. Now taking pictures with the cell phone is all nice and easy to put on your Facebook and impress your friends, but unless Aliens have invaded the moon and there is a force field around there. I think this blue thing is kind of a problem in this picture. So how do we improve upon it? Well, as with most people, I went online to ask our fellow Astronomical Royal Society of Online Experts. <laughs> and I discovered the answer very fast. Pretty much everybody said get a ZWO ASI. So I go to the shop, found the camera, really like it, ready to buy it. Hmm, okay. $500. Okay. Guys, isn't that a little bit pricey? They said, well, my friend, if you want to be part of the elite league of royal astronomers online, you gotta pay the price. Astronomy is an expensive hobby. Hmm, I was like, okay, let me ask my wife. What the? $500 for what is essentially a web camera. No way, I said no freaking way. That's a lot of money for a webcam. Did I mention it's a webcam? $500 for a webcam? Okay, no. So, I went online, which is when I discovered this nice, amazing little camera. It's called Angel Eyes 200W. Here we can check quickly some pictures. You can get quite respectable pictures, no blue force fields of the moon, of the planets, of the sun, basically of the entire solar system. But few months down the line, I was beginning to be unhappy with the quality of the images themselves. So I went and researched to find a 4K camera. I did find the camera and let's have a look back one month before the day that I received the camera of the unpacking and how it looks like. And later we can have a look at some of the pictures that I've taken with this camera. I haven't had a look at it yet. These are the packages I got. So. Let me get my Batman keychain and unpack what we have here today. Okay. There we go, it says HD camera. <laughs> uh, what I have ordered is a security camera. Pretty long cable, that's always important. So normally, as this is a security camera here, you would install some kind of a small lens. But in our case, instead of a lens, basically the whole telescope will act as a one huge lens. And if you have a look here, you can actually see the chip on it. So how do we attach this one to the telescope? What you are going to need is a small adapter. I also ordered the adapter and let's hope they send the right one and it fits. Okay, so far so good, looking good. It's basically an adapter, 1.25 inches. The nice thing is it has threaded outside, so here I can attach some filters like the ultraviolet infrared filter. My previous camera didn't have it. And let's see if it fits. These things you never know. Perfect fit. 
right? And there you go. Simply take the camera, attach this an eyepiece in the telescope and you're ready to go. Now it is kind of amazing when you buy from China, that's the entire manual that you get. Two A4 pages. <laughs> I have to say I kind of like it, that's minimalism at its best. You definitely ensure that the price has been optimized. And the product itself is really nice, fully metal, I really like that. And here you can see the famous Sony chip, as you can see the chip is right under this glass and what you will be doing is you will be shining the focal light of the telescope directly on it. And here is of course the adapter that I had to buy from another store that allows me to put the camera instead of an eyepiece. Alright, and here you can see the famous Sony IMX415 chip. I'm really curious as to how this chip performs in the field and whether it's worth its name and reputation. Now that we have the camera unpacked, it's time for me to spend a few months playing around with it, taking some images, taking some videos uh, and then especially I'm very curious to compare it with the other cheap camera that I had, that is the Full HD, $33 ones. I'm really curious to see how the Sony IMX415 chip compares to that one and just how much of an improvement the 4K resolution is. Here we are a month later and now let's have a look at some of the pictures. Now for the next section of the video you may want to turn the quality to 4K because it was shot in 4K from the telescope. These were taken in the last few days. Here you can see a 57 megapixel image of the moon. Quite amazing and I think it compares very well to some of the pictures taken with a big mirrorless camera. Here we also see some close-ups of the Copernicus crater and the Apollo 15 landing location. And just today I quickly also took an image of one of the sunspots on the sun. But what if you want to take some pictures of deep space objects? Well, in that case, you will have to look elsewhere. <laughs> because this is really not the interest in my hobby. I don't see myself ever spending the time necessary to take one of these pictures. It takes a lot of time and a lot of effort to do one of these. Especially processing the picture afterwards. That will be all for now. I hope I have helped dispel the notion that astronomy has to be an expensive hobby, especially astrophotography. That is clearly not true, as you can see from the quality of these pictures. Keep in mind that telescope was not even using a tracking platform. To the best of my knowledge, I haven't seen too many people using this solution, a 4K industrial camera with the Sony IMX415 chip. So I hope more people will start to use this and we can see some more amazing pictures without spending $500 on a webcam. 